So today here on Fixed Dish, replacing a cell, a single cell in an industrial battery. Uh, this one specifically is 18 cell or 36 volt. There's about a hundred different ways you can set this up. But uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the forklift to tug the battery out the side and support it on the forks. Pull it. These things weigh quite a bit. In this case, this weighs uh, 2,052 pounds. So it's nothing light. Oh, and the other thing to be aware of is don't forget to uh, unplug your battery. It'd suck to it'd suck to jerk that out of there. So here we are looking at the top of the battery. Like I said, one, two, three, four, five, six is just underneath there. It crosses over seven, eight, nine. This is what we're gonna do. 10, 11, 12. You can see how this bar crossed over. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So anyways, yeah. This is our culprit. We already pre previously diagnosed this. So we're gonna go ahead and prep this. I've got little caps to cap these off to keep lead from going down inside there, you'll see in a moment. But I'll get the, uh, the watering kit flopped out of the way. That way we don't uh, have to contend with it. Okay, so you want to use nitriles on this or some type of glove. And you want to use PPE. Keep the acid from flashing in your face if you had an accident but pop these loose okay. then get our caps out keep any form material from dropping down inside there because there's an active lead battery in there And that's a uh, sulfuric acid and water mix. Alrighty, so we got that out of the way. Again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This guy right here, and I think we marked it last time, if I remember right. And if we did, I can't see it. That looks to be the one. It's all slimy and sludgy in there. I'll double check it before we get too crazy. But then you gotta pop these caps off, which is basically these are just like lead bars. We have to drill out these to take the bars off. That way this cell becomes free. We'll pluck it out, put the new one in, and uh, vice versa the process. Let me 
show you this up here. So when they get casted, they're kind of rough. And then I smooth them up. There they are. They're vice grips that they have uh, took a nut, welded to it, and split the nut in half. So when you put it on there, it'll uh, grip the lead and actually make like an impression in it. Couple things to note: the batteries have a uh, orientation. They got positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and these are all in series. So we need to follow this. We got positive, positive, positive. So positive needs to be on the left-hand side. So we need to be conscientious of that. I can't see what I'm looking at, but I got to put that in. The other thing is, as you saw when it came out, it kind of stretched the lugs out a little bit. That's because it's fairly dry down in there so we're gonna give it something to kind of slide on and this is PB blaster but it's somewhat of a corrosion inhibitor so give it a little spritz on its sliding surfaces so hopefully it slides all the way down thanks for following along with me here if you wouldn't mind commenting down below on the things you'd like to see in the future, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. Alright, here we are. Got the cell dropped in. So you can see we got our orientation right. Positive, 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 positive. Now we gotta weld back on our lugs. And you can see how that lines up pretty good. Whoop. See how that lines up. Lines up pretty good. Not mad at that at all. Now let's see if we can get these welded in. Now the way you do this is you have a uh, like a carbon arc rod and then uh, it's a stinger just like a um, like a uh, stick welder and we need to use the battery itself to create the short which will cause the ro uh, rod to heat up and melt the lead. I always keep a set of needle nose handy because if this breaks off, you can pluck it off there real quick before it melts out of there. There we go. Now we're starting to heat up. Starting to melt that lead down inside there. Okay, now we've got a good connection. And you want it to bond with the strap itself so you need to do a good job of melting into the edges that way you make sure you have a good bond but don't overheat it so you blow the side out and then go ahead and fill that sucker in with enough lead bring it back up to the top and be very careful on these like that side got real soft on me real quick And I take pride in this a little bit, try to make it look kind of pretty at least. So, there you go. Drop some 
some lead in there. We don't have a lot. And then sometimes what I notice on these lead cells or these carbon arcs, they get kind of used up where they're just gray on the edge. So I break that little piece off. So I have a new fresh start. Then get back after it, and it'll start heating up like crazy again. Okay, melt, make sure we melt that in there so it's got a nice bond with our strap. I just kind of, you know, stab it in the edge a little bit. Oh, so I had a minor blowout there. Let's show you this. You can just barely see. This little piece of, ah, if I can show you, this little piece right here that kind of came out. And this piece is done. Nice part about this. Cover this up. Nobody's to the wiser. I get that bonded down in there. Drop some lead in. It's very important to get the layers. one piece I get to these edges and actually what's funny is this brand of battery having the very thin walls you get in some other brands the walls are a lot thicker so a lot more forgiving on your heat control you can kind of just get sort of nuts with it For a second bam no one's the wiser put this back together now we'll take that most of the way in check make sure we don't catch this like that okay double check clear push the rest of the way in over tight so it uh, binds a little bit back this nut off inside and then when I roll this Allen back it'll lock the nut in place there we go so that way that battery don't slide around and that my friends is fixed Fish.